I think we are live. Hey! We're live. Webinar is now streaming live on Facebook, it says. Okay. Uh, you talk while I'm going to go look. I'm going to look and make sure we're live. So It says it's uh, live. Well, let me find out, man. Hey, because last time you asked me for a dad joke, I got one for you. Yes. Okay. Give it what, to me. What do you call a fake noodle? I don't know what an impasta. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> That's a good dad joke. I hope, I hope we're not live. All right. <laughs> so, Hey, if you guys can see us, uh, in the, we're live in the seven figure flipping and wholesaling group. So, that's our free Facebook group that we have a bunch of people in there. We got like 6,000 people in there. And so if you're watching with us in there, just comment that you can hear us, that you can see us, that we're live, all that stuff. And what we're doing today is we just premiered Monday night at 8 p.m. on our Seven Figure Flipping YouTube channel. We premiere the seven day flip series with Tyler and his team. So we premiered episode one, two weeks, a week and a half ago this past Monday, episode two. And so every week going forward at eight o'clock on Monday nights, eight o'clock central time, we're gonna premiere our next episode. So episode three is coming up. And then on Thursday afternoons, just like this at four o'clock uh, central time, that's the plan going forward unless something changes, is Tyler and I, or me and somebody else will, like I'll interview different people and I'll answer your questions. So people have been emailing in questions. People have been posting questions on Facebook. So you can email it in, you can, the best way, is to go to our YouTube channel, our Seven Figure Flipping YouTube channel, go to the episode and put your questions in the comments there, and then I'll bring them to this and I'll ask them and get you guys answers. So right now, if you're live with us inside the group, if you're watching, you can post questions in there for Tyler um, about the seven day flip, episode one, episode two, anything that we've done up to this point. I'm not gonna reveal anything that's in the future this week. I, I kind of gave a spoiler last week and I, I know what it is, but I don't know if anybody caught it, so. Um, the problem is I'm, sh I'm shooting episode three and episode four right now. Tyler has lived through it all. So he knows the ending. That's so right. we have to make sure that we don't give it away. Right. It's, so it's hard to do like to not give spoilers, but we'll do our best. And the cool thing is like Tyler has not even seen, uh, episode three or episode four. He's watching this live with you guys on Monday nights at eight. I'm not letting him see it. <laughs> this is like I said in the, in the previous one that we did, it's just kind of like, our gift to him, we're highlighting him, his crew, his family, and all of that stuff. And I think it's really cool to, for me to watch it and then talk to Tyler afterwards and say, hey man, what did you think? So every, every week he's like, hey, we got the setup here. We're, we're checking it out. We got the big screen, we got the popcorn. It's really different than if you watch it over and over and over again. Like I watch it, I watch every episode like 15 times as we're cutting it, we're editing it, we're making adjustments. So if he was involved in that, it just, I think it would lose a lot of the, I don't know, a lot of the excitement about it for him and his family. So this is kind of like that present that keeps coming every week. I hope uh, we're doing a good job. So what do you think, Tyler? How's it going for you guys so far? Do you like oh, it? Man, it's, it's so much fun. Just like what you said, it's something our Monday nights now is it's like our family night that we get together as a family and we get to watch these episodes. So my boys are stoked. They loved it. They actually got to see, I think it, they had a small cameo on the last episode. So they're like, Oh, look, we're on TV. That's so cool. So but I think they're going really well. Like we've told our story, we've kind of given some back story, we've built some characters up a little bit. And now I'm excited to see what happens in episode three, because I think that that'll be a really exciting episode from what I've what I think it should be anyways. Oh, yeah, episode three. So far, I don't know. I really love like, I love to hear episode one. Like I get to hear your guys' story. Uh, and it's funny because I saw um, your wife uh, on Facebook and I like sent her a friend request, sent her a message. And I was like, hey, I feel like we're like best friends now, but you don't really <laughs> like know me. <laughs> right? So, like she knows from about me from you. And I basically have watched your whole story. And it's, it's interesting because when I'm at Flip Hacking Live and people come up to me and they're like, hey, I listen to the podcast or I, I've seen your videos or your trainings and things like that. I feel like I, I know you really well. Like I know your whole story, your, your son, James, like all of the things that have gone out over the last five years. And they come up to me like, we're best friends. And I was like, I don't think we've ever met. And they're like, oh, really? Yeah, but we have these stories in our head, right? So that's how I feel totally. with your wife right now. <laughs> like, that's awesome. We are like best friends, <laughs> yeah, but she doesn't right? know it yet. <laughs> so, um, hey, so I got a couple questions that came in. So episode Sweet. one, was more about like you and your family, the backstory, what happened. We talked about yeah. Flip Hacking Live. We talked about all of that stuff. 
And, uh, you know, Tom Lonnie was in there. We talked about insurance. And so we did the Q&A on that. And then episode two, if you guys haven't seen it and you're watching along with us, it, it, go watch it, first of all, on, on our Seven Figure Flipping YouTube channel. And, but, and, and it's out. Like, you can go back and watch it. You don't have to watch it only on Monday night at 8 o'clock. A lot of people are like, hey, are, are you going to show it again like a rerun? It's on YouTube. You can watch it like any other YouTube video anytime you want. And so this one was um, more about the deal, right? We like yeah. dove into the numbers on the deal, how you found it, how you negotiated it, what the pricing was, how much equity is in there, all of that stuff. We talked about the deal. And then we talked a little bit about the mindset stuff. And then we also talked about um, Brandon, uh, Brandon and Dana coming out and visiting. And so we got to hear from them. Like, why were you coming out there? We also talked more about coronavirus and meth. So um, I have a lot of questions that revolve around that. Everybody seems to be really excited about meth. Yeah. So, um, cool. so what, the first thing that I want to ask you is, at this point, like but coming into this, just to confirm, you had done three individual seven-day flips up to this point, right? So somebody asked, yep. they're like, I, I just want to make sure that he's already done three individual seven-day flips at this point. Right. And the first one you said was like, awesome. This was, it was so great. Your wife was like, I think that's our, my favorite flip up to this point that we've ever done. Yeah. And the second one was not so great. Yep. Not so great. <laughs> that's a good way so, to put it. And so you talked about it a little bit on this episode with like the second one being a little bit, um, like a little bit, uh, I, there were some things that you did, like you moved a bunch of things around. You didn't necessarily follow the plan. Like how important is it to follow the plan in these things? These, so that's the question that I got. Oh man. So the first one, we executed the plan extremely well. Like we, we did it really, really good and really sound and we didn't change anything. And we were done on day six and we were sitting in hammocks on day seven, right? Relaxed. We had just done some paint touch up, but when we did the second one, it kind of domino affected and we changed one thing and then it just did other things and it just kept moving things back and messing things up. So we changed the cabinet schematics and that changed the countertops and then it changed the backsplash and it just affected all of these things. We just kept making changes. We were supposed to do shiplap and we didn't. So we had to compensate for that. Um, just a lot of those things. And so it was just crazy to, to have that, just see it fall apart because we didn't execute as well. We had planned it and we changed the plan mid flip and it burned us. We were at the 11th hour on day seven. We were all stressed and we were all going to kill each other. And it just was a different experience on that second one. And it all came down to that, like the, like executing the plan. You guys had the plan, but it sounds like you kind of threw it out after a couple of days. We did. Yeah. We made some on the fly decisions that at the time we didn't think were that big a deal, but then they ended up making other things a bigger deal down the road. So we just didn't execute it very well. I mean, I think that, I think that goes for anything in, in life and business, right? But it, when it's contracted like that into seven days, it's just so much, it compounds so, so, so much more probably and catches right. up. Like if it was a 30 or 40 day project or I don't know, six month project, like some of the ones that we've done in the past, right? It's a, uh, it's like, ah, uh, we'll just, it's just another week. Right. But this is like every single hour, every single, it just starts like, there becomes issues with other things as this happens, probably. It just yes. starts to compound. So oh, yeah. you mentioned in there, like rental grade, we're doing this to, to a rental standard. Can you just, I, I got a question which some, from somebody that emailed us that said like, what does that mean? Is, it, is a rental standard different than a flip? Like, how do you classify that? Like, what are the differences for you guys? Absolutely. So on retail, we're trying to get the highest value possible. So we need to perceive what adds value to the end buyer because they're our customer, right? They're gonna come and buy our property. On a rental grade, we just want renters who are gonna be like, this is really nice. And the difference in, there's a lot of things that we do different in rental grade properties that we do, that we would do differently in a retail property. A few of those things are like um, shower backsplashes in, or sorry, the surrounds for the shower. So we like to tile those in a lot of our retail um, flips because people really like that, right? They feel like it adds value. It's well done. It's nice. In a rental grade, we'll just do like a, a an insert in the shower pan and stuff like that. So those are a big difference. And then other things is that it was all one paint color. We didn't do two-tone paint like we would do in a normal retail 
listing. We would spend the time, we would mask off the trim, we would paint the trim a different color. And this one, it didn't matter because you're gonna get renters in there and they could paint it, they can do whatever they want and you're gonna to wanna to repaint it anyways when they move out. And so it's just so much easier and less complicated to paint it all one color versus trying to do it two or even three colors like we would do in a retail situation. So those are just a few things. When we say it's rental grade, we're using really cheap, inexpensive cabinets. We're using cheap lighting. We're painting all the walls, the ceiling, the trim, everything usually is the same color. Um, you're just trying to make it a, a good rental for someone that they can come in and they can add flavor to it. They could paint the walls if they want to. Um, but then we can go back in and we can do it all over again if we have to turn the unit. So we'll go in and we'll just paint it all one color again. And we like to put harder floors down. So some LVP, stuff like that, that maybe will last a little bit longer. But again, it's really cheap and cost effective. We're not putting hardwood floors. We're not tiling kitchens. We're not doing anything like that because we just want to make sure that we, we keep it cheap and at a, at a different grade than we would if we were selling it for retail. So does that help with the timing of the things also, like being able to reduce time for manpower, workload, stuff like that, like not, ha not needing, uh, I don't know if you put granite in, but not needing granite, but just having laminate countertops can get cut really quick and on site and not needing like all the special tools and things like that. And then painting, can you just like spray the whole place without having to tape it off and spend extra time? Definitely, that's, that's the whole point on a rental grade. On the other seven day flips that we did, we took the time and we did it two toned and we had to figure that out logistically. But when you're doing a rental grade property, if you know that the end buyer is gonna be a landlord or someone's gonna be, you're gonna rent these units out, then it's all about time and efficiency. The renter doesn't really care that it's two tone, at least I wouldn't, in my experience, they don't. Um, but an end buyer is going to care they're gonna see that that adds a lot more value and that they're willing to pay for that value when they purchase the property. The renter is just excited to have a nice painted, clean carpet, uh, everything's working rental unit. So, and I, I'm not speaking for renters, but just from my experience, that's what we've seen is that you want the retail buyer to pay for that value when the renter doesn't really see that as value. Yeah, and they, they, I mean, they're just going to hang up posters and put holes in the walls and do all yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Most of us in this group are <laughs> landlords, right? Or yeah. if you're watching, like, there's no, we're not bashing on tenants, but we know that, especially at that price point, like, what's a typical, what's the rent in, in those buildings? Uh, so the, about a thousand bucks, 800 to a thousand okay. bucks. So for me, at least down in Florida, like a thousand dollars, under a thousand dollars is kind of our cutoff, over a thousand dollars typically need a little bit nicer place, $1,200, $1,300. And then yep. eight fifty, nine hundred, dollars 1000 like that's really the, our point in Florida where, at least in Pensacola where I am, that when you get under that, then you, you've got a huge rush for people that are just happy with just a house, yep. right? Because I mean, probably a, a trailer is like six fifty. dollars So eight fifty, you're going to like the next level up from that. And so, and then you're going up to $1,200, $1,500, $2,000. You're getting into nicer property where people are going to be a little more picky. Right. Um, but, you know, and you can look at that in, in the different areas of, so if you have a, a fully painted, like brand new painted on the walls, you've got car clean carpet, brand new, you're the first person to move into this house. Like, it's a gold mine, right? Yeah, so totally. um, that's, it's perfect. So, okay, that's rental grade. Now, uh, if you guys are just joining us, if you're on uh, Facebook Live, if you're on YouTube, if you're just joining us, you can drop questions. I'm monitoring the chat for questions. Um, so you guys can uh, drop some questions in there, some comments. If you want me to ask Tyler any questions about what he's doing with the seven day flips or anything that might help you on your flips, then uh, drop some questions in, I'll ask them. So I've got, a, I've got a list of some that have come in between Monday and we're talking about Tyler's seven day flip series that we have on our seven figure flipping YouTube channel right now. And just some of the questions that have come in since Monday night's episode aired live at eight o'clock central. And every Monday night we're airing an episode live, like we're premiering it so everybody can watch together. All of our mastermind members are watching together, other people commenting. It's really cool and fun to do. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's like we're actually launching an actual TV show on Monday night at eight o'clock central, right? So, so you bought these properties for, uh, let's see, for $360,000. You're putting yep. about 50 into it. So you're all in for 410. And the after repair value is, if you could sell it on the retail market, 540,000. So yep. you brought, you're, you're bringing in 130,000. You're, you're creating $130,000 of equity for yourself. 130 grand yeah. out of thin air like this. 
So pretty amazing, right? So the question that I got in all of this is, how did you get the money for this house? Like talk through like the private lenders, like how does that work? There's somebody who was like, I, how did he have zero dollars in? We, we titled this, here it's right there, four houses for zero dollars. So Tyler paid zero dollars for these four houses out of his pocket, right? So when I was talking to him on that Monday night episode, I said, you don't have any money in this deal. You raised all the money. So how does that work? Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, so there's lots of different ways to do that, but you've got to find someone who has money or who has the capital to be able to lend you or that's interested in investing in real estate, who wants a good return, who's sick of the stock market, whatever the, the case may be, you want to find that person who has capital. So on these two deals, we bought them together as a package deal. So when we found the property, the, the owner lived next door to these two houses. We were originally trying to buy that house. And he said, hey, look, I've got these. I want to sell them together as a package. Do you have, could you pay $360,000? And so we said, hey, sure, look, no problem. We'll do it. So we went out and we found one of our investors who had $360,000. And we said, hey, investor, look, we have this deal. We want to buy these properties. We're going to rehab them. We think it'll be worth about four, $540 when we're all finished. So your, your investment will be super protected and it will be secured by real estate. We'll put you on the deed of the house. Um, and we'll pay you interest for however long we have your money. And the investor said, great, that sounds awesome. So he signed up for that. And then he also said, hey, well, do you need some rehab money too? And we said, absolutely, we'd love some rehab money. We'll just tack that onto the loan and make the loan a little bit bigger and we'll just pay interest on the full amount of the loan. So he actually funded both of these. And so he said, hey, look, I'll give you the rehab money and I'll give you the, the interest. And a lot, of, a lot of times we'll split that as well. So on other seven day flips and other flips that we do, we'll have one person that will pay for the purchase price and we'll have another person that will, will bring in money and pay for the rehab. So that way we don't have to put any money into it. We don't have to put, like you said, Bill, we put $0 into these deals and it just works out really well that we're paying interest on that money but it allows my company that I can still operate and we can still do, you know, multiple things at the same time. I can make my payroll. I can keep all of my money. I don't have to put any money into the deals and the investors are getting a good return on their money for partnering with us, essentially that they're getting paid interest for however long we borrow the money. They're secured by real estate. And then also it gives us the opportunity that we don't have to put any capital into it. So so Does that answer your question? Yeah, Do I need absolutely. to go in more depth there? Is your okay. investor going to watch this uh, episode? Is there what? Is your investor going to watch this episode? Possibly. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we won't, uh, we won't, because I want to dig into this a little bit. Like I want to yeah, go a little deeper. Like, is this somebody who invests with you on other deals? Is this the first time they invested with you? Like, how do you start a relationship like that? Yeah. So this is a guy that's in our community. He's, he's a very known investor among flippers in our small circle here in Utah. And so I reached out to him. We ran the numbers on the deal. I said, Hey, look, this is the deal. So this was his actually first deal that he did with us. And so I've never used him before, but he's heard my name. We've, we've been in the same rooms together. Uh, we've been to breakfast together a couple times. We just never had a deal that really made sense. So I reached out to him and I said, Hey, look, I've got this deal. I reached out to a whole bunch of investors and I, we always shop around, right? We like to use the cheapest money first. That's kind of our rule is that if you'll do the cheapest money, that's who we want to use. So I talked with this guy, I said, hey, what do you need? You need points, you need interest. And points are just a percentage of the deal, if you don't know what that is. If you use a hard money lender, they'll give you a point is like 1% of the total deal. So if you borrow $100,000, you would pay one point, which is 1% or a 1,000 bucks. So that's kind of how points work. But he's like, yeah, don't worry about it. We'll just come up with a really good interest rate and then yeah, then we should be good to go and I'll help you. I'll fund the purchase price and then we'll do the rehab as well. And you'll just pay interest on it when we sell it. So I still have not paid any interest on this deal because it's, it was all under the understanding that I would either refinance him out and pay him his interest or um, we would sell the properties and I would just pay him out that way. So we accrue the interest. It just sits there and just accrues every month we have the money. And then as soon as we, don't, we're, we pay it off, then he gets paid back principal plus interest. Okay. So 
so this guy is is investing in real estate. So other people are borrowing are borrowing money from him. So yeah. what about some of your other investors? Like, where do you find these people? What what kind of circles are they in? Are they friends, family? Are they all investing in real estate? Like, where do you find people like this? Oh, everywhere. So I just, it's funny because one of my very first private money lenders was my dentist and he's in there, you know, in your mouth. And he always asks you the questions when he's trying to, yeah, and you can't really answer anyways. But he asked me, he's like, what do you do? I said, Hey, look, I own a construction company. We flip houses. He's like, Oh, I love HGTV. I'm like, Oh, perfect. So do I. And I told him about it. And he's like, Hey, well, my IRA sucks. I'm making 2% on it, whatever. And he's like, do you ever take investors? And I said, sure. You know, I'd love to take your self-directed IRA money and put it into real estate. And so we kind of structured a deal together and he was, yeah, just that's how, where we started, but anybody, it doesn't have to be, I don't have a rich uncle that has money. It was just going out and putting my name out there and finding people who had this money that are willing to invest and that want a secure uh, investment. So with secure, there's a tangible asset. It's not like the stock market or, or currency or anything like that. It's, it's, they can go and see the house if they wanted to. And they, it's a, a tangible thing that they're securing the property against. So a lot of people like that idea, but yeah, it's anybody. I, I find the money everywhere. Hard money lenders, lending home. I love Ray at lending home. He's such a great guy. And, and man, we've used a lot of hard money lenders. When I first got started, that's all we would do because that's all I could find. And it's a lot more expensive money or we would joint venture with someone or we would do, you know, 50, 50 splits. I do all the work. You would fund the deal and we'll split the profit right down the middle. I did a lot of those deals, but uh, yeah, look, there's tons. I know that through the group, we have a great deal with lending home, which is awesome. And they're a good one. There's a lot of other investors out there that are just awesome that are willing to help you with real estate. So yeah, for like I started the same way, 50-50 deals, uh, like uh, JVs. That's probably the, one, some of the most expensive money that I've ever borrowed, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, it de-risks a little bit for you when you don't have the money, but it was really expensive. So, and then I look at, I look at money like there's three different tiers for me. One is the tier of people who like hard money lenders or somebody like you're talking about who's investing in real estate loans and doing hard money loans. And if, you, if you're not familiar with hard money loans, because we're putting this on YouTube, this is like a series that people are following along. A hard money loan is the, the true definition is like there's a hard asset attached to it. So it, it's, a, it's a mortgage or a deed of trust on a property and that's the hard asset that it's attached to. But mm. it's, it's typically used as like the slang in our industry of expensive money, right? So it's like points, like two points and 12% interest as an example. Two points means 2% of the amount that is being loaned and then 12% annualized interest that's being paid. And usually it's institutionally funded a lot of times or a private uh, person who has a bunch of money or is brokering money for some, for, so he'll borrow, he or she will borrow that money at like 6%, turn around and load it, load, loan it out at two and 12, or they borrow it at eight and loan it at two and 12, something like that. So that's like the top tier for me. So that's the money I try to stay away from if I can avoid it. And then there's, there's that middle tier of money where it's somebody who is like a savvy investor. So maybe they're investing in the stock market or they have a self-directed IRA or 401k and they're looking for somewhere around just like 10 or 12% interest. Um, it's a little bit cheaper money, but they are savvy investors that are looking for a higher return. And then you have the people who like think that their CD is making them like decent money or it's in a, um, in a savings account or a money market account making a half percent interest. And so they're happy with like five or 6% interest. Yep. So those are the different tiers in my mind. And it's the, the, re the rate of return is inversely proportionate to the speed at which you can get your money <laughs> is the way totally. I look at it. Yep. The hard totally. money lender can give you your money in five days. So lending home, we talked about lending home on this, on this episode, actually, and you mentioned them. They're, they're, so, they're not like really expensive money, in my opinion. And so for, us, for those of us who are doing a ton of deals, I find that they're probably closer to that tier two person, at least the, the rates that I have, like the, we've done a bunch of business with them. So they're closer to that second person, but their speed is really fast. So that's why I've liked them. And I think they allow us to scale up. So if, if I... The problem that we have a lot of time is we're going out and spending a lot, like where are you spending your time? You're spending a ton of time raising money 
And that can be okay. But if you need to spend your time like Tyler is like, like doing deals and, and finding more deals and, and, and making sure that your, your team is set up, you're finding better contractors, all that stuff. Then if you can find a partner like Lending Home to, to fund all of your deals with hardly any money out of pocket at decent rates, like pretty good rates at fast speeds where you can close in seven days, nine days, 10 days, however fast you need to, then it allows you to stop worrying about that and go scale. Now, the mom and pop, like, person who's got 1% when you're, and they, they might have 50,000 here, 100,000 here. It's kind of rare that somebody has like $2 million in a money market account where they can fund all your deals. Whereas, you know, an institutional lender like Lending Home is doing hundreds of millions of dollars, right? So yeah. that's the trade-off. And then it might take a couple months to warm them up to what you're doing. Like they, they're going to like ease into it. Like, this seems like a scam. <laughs> you want to give me 8%? That sounds scammy, you know? So it's a different conversation. So I think it's cool to, to, to look at all of those things, start thinking about it. What happens usually is you're like three days from the deal going, I just got to find a lender now and I'll pay anything, right? I'll give up half the deal. I'll give up 70% of the deal because I need to get it done and I just need some money. So what you want to do is build that pipeline. And so I think this is one of the most important things that we talked about. I'm kind of glossed over it a little bit when we mentioned kind of your lender and that they're funding 100%. And so like Tyler said, you can find them anywhere. They can be friends, family, a friend of a friend, uh, somebody that plays poker with your parents at, at a mm -hmm. poker game or like, you, you never know. And the best thing to That's do is true. just talk about what you're doing. Like yep. mention it, talk about it, go live on Facebook. Like go to my personal Facebook page today. I went live and I talked about raising money. And I talked about how I'm coming up with a, with a, like a, something to help other people learn what I've learned and how easy it is for us to go raise money, a million dollars in a month, no problem. Like, and before, before I go back five years, I, I wouldn't have said that. I'd say I can never raise a million dollars ever. And it's all about that mindset shift. So anyway, we mentioned Lending Home, lending home we talked about them, we talked about them in the, um, in the episode. So um, they, have, they have like an application process, things like that. So if you wanna use them and check them out, you can go to the link that we used in the previous episode, sevenfigureflipping.com slash lending home. And you can fill out some, you can basically answer a couple of questions and find out what kind of rates you would get. So like Tyler said, he recommends them. I recommend them. They work with a ton of our people in seven figure flipping. Um, and then they're a good partner to allow you to scale and grow. And the cool thing is they work with somebody who's brand new and they also do rentals, which they just started doing and they, their rental program kind of paused for a little bit and is, is back. So it's, that's exciting for a deal like this, like Tyler's doing where it's going to turn into a rental you can actually get a rental program loan right away from the start. So instead of having to use a bridge and transition, so. And, and one of the best things to Bill, like what you said, we use all three of those tiers. I 100% agree with that. But the nicest part about using a lending home is they've done hundreds and thousands of these deals. So if it's a bad deal, like we talked about too, that you know my first deal I lost like 37 grand on, right? So if I would have had someone like a lending home or someone that could have said, hey, did you check your numbers? Because we just checked your numbers and it doesn't look like a good deal. That would have saved me so much time and money and pain if I would have had someone that could have just said, hey, we ran your numbers and as a third party, we looked at the deal and we said, hey, there's no deal here. You're, not, you're gonna lose your shirt on this deal. That is so comforting to me because they're not gonna lend on it if they're gonna lose their shirt on it. It just wouldn't make sense for them to do that. So they wanna make sure that it is a deal and that it makes sense and then that just kind of double checks you. So man, what a, what a great asset that that would be. It, it would have probably saved me thousands of dollars if I would have had someone telling me, yeah, this is a deal. So go ahead and do it. Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, you forget that they're like a partner in the deal, right? Absolutely. You know, and, it's, and they have a lot more experience, especially as a newer investor. Um, I've seen a lot of newer investors get denied by their hard money lender and try to figure out a way to get the deal done anyway and say that they don't know what they're talking about. They're wrong. Um, they're their appraisal doesn't isn't right they didn't use these comps like guys like it, you listen to that like the, the hair on the back of your neck should be standing up then and saying am i missing something here we get emotionally attached to these things these okay. deals like i've lost a ton of money i have a house that i lost seventy thousand dollars on and sh like all the signs when i look back were pointing to don't do the deal but i got caught up in the emotional side of it real quick story on that one there was a realtor competing for this deal and me competing for this deal. And when I found out that they were going to give it to the realtor, I got ticked off and my uh, competitiveness took over. 
And I was like, I'll just pay a little bit more and get it done. And there was an opportunity there to make $100,000, but I didn't see the opportunity to lose $100,000. Yeah. And so uh, all of my, some of my trusted advisors were like, I don't want to lend on this deal. I had, uh, I had Terry Berger, who is a, uh, Tyler, you know him well. He's a great oh, yeah. friend of, our, of mine and uh, the whole community. And he's like, I'm not going to lend on that, man. And, but I'll lend on this other one down the road because of this, this, and this. And he's got a ton more experience than me, and I didn't listen. So, uh, Terry, I need to listen to you next time. We're saving you seventy thousand dollars, and a whole lot, a whole lot of this gray hair right here wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that house. Right. So, but just uh, okay. use it as an asset. They're there. They're there to help you out. So. Yeah. So you can go to sevenfigureflipping.com/slash/lending/home to check that out. I'll put it in the in the description. But um, I want to move on a little bit and just kind of we touched on meth a ton in the episode, but it seems to be the thing that like everybody loves and wants to talk about. So. I don't really know what else to ask, but everybody, I got like four people that were like, hey, can you talk more about the meth remediation? Like, what does it take? So what does it take to remediate meth real quick? Like, what's the quick synopsis of like, yeah, so it comes back positive for meth and you have to do what? Yep. So there's a couple different ranges of meth, right? So if they cooked meth in your house, that's totally different than if they just smoked meth. So the levels of, of meth that come back are you don't want breaking bad house because trying to rehab that house is a full on gut job. You got to get rid of sheetrock. You got to change out the AC units and the furnace. Like a, a meth lab is totally different than if someone just recreationally used meth, right? And so we get a meth test on these. And, and when we bought these houses, we knew that there was already meth in there. It was hard to miss. The county had come and shut down the property. There was a huge pink tag on it that said, do not enter. It's like a misdemeanor if you go in this house. And so uh, the meth remediation, we have a, a great company that we use here locally. And there's a lot of these other guys that will, that are out there, all of these like mold and fire and kind of those remediation companies. A lot of them will do meth as well. But the process on that is they're just one of our subcontractors. And we just wanted to make sure that it was safe for our guys to go in there. So they tested the levels, they worked with the county, we pulled permits, the county has to, the county health department has to be involved because again, to go in the property is a misdemeanor. So we got them involved, we kind of ran through that process and the process of remediating, they have to spray a chemical. So meth gets absorbed into a surface. So it's walls, it's carpet, it's flooring, it's whatever, that, that sheetrock, for example, will absorb the meth and we have to go in and chemi chemically treat it so it will get rid of that contamination. And the issue with meth is that it wouldn't affect you. Like if we were walked in the house, we walked in there a ton, honestly, before the county even came out. Um, but we weren't exposed to it long time or long term. So if you were to go in there and you had kids in there or you had something, it can make you really sick. And so that's the issue with meth, but they come and they detox. So they spray a chemical on the walls and sometimes it's so potent that it will peel off the paint. And they're just drawing that, that chemical out of the walls, the methamphetamine. They're, they're drawing that out of the walls. They're scrubbing the walls. They're cleaning everything so that it doesn't get into the air and doesn't make you sick. So we just leave that to the professionals. I don't want to go and clean meth. That just seems like a terrible thing to me. So we, we bring in a crew that will do that. They'll clean out the, the furnace because, again, it's all air. It's all stuff that you breathe. So they, they tune up the furnace and clean it out. And then they'll also clean the walls or the affected area. And then they come back in with the county. The county will check it, say, yep, there's no more decontamination in here or the levels are low enough that it, it won't affect health in any means. And yeah, that's, that's really what meth is, but it's bad stuff. I've been in a meth lab in a house that was cooked and the FBI had come and kicked in the windows. They'd raided everything. And it, was, it would like burn your eyes. You would walk in and you're, you knew it was a meth lab. So we didn't spend very much time in that house because it was just crazy. But we had, to, we had to take it down to the stud. It cost us like 12 grand to decon meth in that whole house. And so these ones were a lot less because again, it was just someone had smoked meth instead of created it. So how do you know if they've smoked it or cooked it? Is there a certain level or just the fact that your eyes are burning when you walk in? Uh, yeah, that's a good sign. <laughs> if you walk in and your eyes burn, mm, probably, good chances are that they've cooked meth in there. Um, yeah, it really is just on the levels. So they'll do a swab on a meth test. They'll swab 
all the rooms and stuff like that. And depending on the levels, that's how you'll know if they cooked it or just had fun with it, I guess. I don't know what you do with it. But. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the name of the, is it just a local company that you use or the yeah, national? Yep, just a local company. So it's called what? Asset Environmental. Um, great guys. We, yeah, I talked about them on Facebook when we were doing, we did, they did some advertising with us actually. So there's a little gold bomb that they gave us a discount and we advertise for them. So maybe I'll, I'll post them in the, the comments below or something. If you're in Utah, yeah. you can totally use them, but asset environmental. Yeah, they're awesome. Cool. So if you're in Salt Lake asset environmental, if you uh, come across a, a breaking bad house uh, yeah. they it or just smoked it, they can help you too. They can. So, yep. they <laughs> there you go. Awesome. I'll give them a shout out uh, on the link. So they're good cool. guys. Okay. Uh, so th then, it, uh, you know, the, I, I'm kind of trying to follow the flow of the episode. So if you're just joining us and you're on Facebook, I see it looks like Jeffrey's watching with us. What's up, Becca, Chris, Rob, Andrea, oh, hey, everybody. Like if you guys are just joining and jumping in, you can drop some questions in there for Tyler about the episode. But we're talking about episode two. We're just doing some Q&A, people send in some questions, posted some questions in the comments of the uh, YouTube channel, the uh, YouTube episode that we did. And every week we're going to do this where we just, we, Monday night at eight o'clock on the YouTube channel, we watch the episode and then we jump in and do some Q&A. So whether you're part of our community or not, uh, we're going live in a couple different places and you can drop your questions in there. You can leave them if you're watching regularly on Monday nights, you can just drop them in the comments of that uh, YouTube episode and we'll answer them here as long as you get them in before we talk, right? So, yeah. um, but if you, if you get them in late, I'll check them and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it on the next one next week. So, um, so Brandon and Dana came out and Brandon said, or, or Dana said something about you that uh, somebody asked about. She's like, she called Tyler her gold bomb friend. Like, what does that mean? What's a gold bomb? <laughs> I don't friend? know. Yeah, you'll have to ask her that question, but. You don't know. So what's a gold bomb? So yeah, I think that was so, what you're asking. Like, you, you know, come on. You're, yeah, you're so, a, so bit, uh, a gold bomb is something that someone gives you, right? That is just super impactful to your business. So I've got tons of those from you and from, you know, so many people in our group that a gold bomb, well, well, I don't even know where that term came from, like a gold bomb, but it's a bomb of gold that you're just like, uh, gives you money, right? It creates money. So the gold bomb friend, I would assume what she's talking about is that I've just given her a ton of value and I've added a ton of value to her business. So Bill, you'd be a gold bomb friend of mine. And I know that you've mentioned Terry and all those other guys, they're all gold gold bomb friends as well so just people someone that adds value and that really helps you you know move your business along yeah so I, I think it was like three probably like three and a half years ago it's probably before you were in seven figure flipping where we had this meeting and we were like man we we've got a uh, we gotta we, we we do these breakout sessions or these hot seats and stuff and people give the goods and so we were trying to come up with like an award uh, or something that we would call it like the person who who gave the best, the best thing to the whole group to go right. use. And so we came up with this term gold bomb. And I don't know who, I don't know who it was, but I can hear Mike Simmons in my ear because he's got this, like, <laughs> he doesn't have a Michigan accent, but he, when he says bam, he says like gold bomb. It's like, bam. there's this Michigan thing there that he can, I'm just like, what did you, I remember him <laughs> saying it for the first time. So I was like, what did you say? And so he, uh, I don't know if he came up with it or Justin did or Andy or somebody, but it was like when we were a small group uh, of like the coaches and stuff at that time. And so this term came up and then we, every, every event we would have so like, we would announce the gold bomb. So we would yeah. run the, run the rooms and the sessions for the hot seats and the breakout sessions and stuff. And then we would bring back all of this gold to the main room where we would all get together, like, you know, 80 of us or so. And then we would present the gold bombs to everybody. And then we would kind of like vote for who had the biggest gold bomb for the, right. and they would win the, the member of the, of the meeting, right? The gold bomb yeah. member. So I remember that's, those uh, meetings, that the gold is like bomb the, meetings. They're the best. That's the gold bomb history lesson inside seven figure <laughs> flipping. So, um, that's cool. you know, it's, it was kind of funny to hear that. It's just kind of gets passed on and just somebody's like, I don't even know where that came from. Like, where does it start? When you said that, I said, I remember where it came from. And <laughs> I think it was the meeting in I think it was the meeting in, in Michigan is either the one in Michigan or the one in Pensacola that we, uh, that we, this thing started. So it was about, you know, two, three years ago. It's probably three years ago. So 
You are a gold, gold bomb, bomb friend, friend of mine. Likewise, too. my friend, you yeah. are my gold bomb friend. <laughs> and so we kind of just talk about like people are walking around just like dropping gold. They don't even know it. You know, they're just like yeah. make a comment. And it's that thing that will change the future of your entire business or change, like allow you to make 20% more money this next year because of just something that somebody mentioned under their breath. And what I find is so cool about a mastermind like this is the new person who comes in doesn't even know that the thing that they're doing is so amazing and they just mention it like it's no big deal and right. it's huge like I, mike simmons tells the story a lot of when i sat next to him at the first mastermind meeting or we had lunch and i just mentioned how much i was paying for a postcard and he's like he's like what how much and I, I said you know i was paying like i don't know 38 cents at the time or something he was paying like 47 cents and he's like how did you find that price? I was like, I just called and negotiated with a bunch of different companies to find the best price. And I shopped a bunch of people. And he's like, I, I said, you should change, you should switch to them. It'll save you a bunch of money. Probably saved him like $20,000 just in a short conversation of a guy who didn't know what he was doing. Right. I'd only sent like 2000 postcards at that point. So you never know, you know, who you're going to meet at, in those, at those events, what's going to be said. And I really mention this for everybody because we go to events a lot and we think that we know what we're going there to get. And we think we know what we need, but you don't. So I just did an event, this Veterans Live event, and I told everybody, like, I am not giving you a schedule for this, these two days because I want you to be present. I want you to watch. I want you to wait because that thing that is going to be said that you needed to hear, you might say, I'm not going to attend for that session or I'm going to make a call or I'm going to go run this errand. Or I'm going to do these things. And so if you ever come to one of my events, like Flip Hacking Live, for example, in October, if you come down to Orlando with us, you will not have a schedule with the speaker, the topic, all those things, because you're going to choose. Anytime somebody asks me for the schedule, what they're really saying to me is, uh, what sessions can I miss? Like, where, what can I just... I went to an event in uh, San Diego and... I didn't know the four speakers that were speaking, the four main keynote speakers. And I didn't, I didn't know their names. I didn't recognize any of them. Three of the four absolutely changed my life. The other one was good. And I got a ton out of that fourth one also. I probably, it, like, had I not been there, the whole trajectory and future of my business and who I am right now could have potentially changed. Like, one of those has come into our world and has impacted me to a huge level. And had I decided to skip one of those sessions, never would have seen them, never would have brought them to you guys, never would have put them on our stage, never would have developed a relationship that I had that has been amazing for me and, and this group. So you, you never know what you're gonna get. So I, anyway, I realize it just went off on a huge tangent, but <laughs> these gold bonds, like it's so important that you just, you're present when yeah. you go to these events and do these things. And it's anything, it's like even right now when you're sitting here watching with us, like and there may be something that you took from this that you're here, like when you're with us, focus, like be there and, and soak it all in and really just kind of see, like you don't know what you need. I always think I know what I need. If I knew what I needed, I would have already executed what I needed to do, right? right. So enjoy the journey. And along the way, there's going to be something there. So that that's, what I feel like, the that's what I feel like Dana was to me, right? I was just saying, hey, this is what we do. We flip houses in seven days and this is why, and this is, we have fun doing it. And she kind of took that gold nugget and said, hey, this is really cool. This is Tyler's my gold bond friend because he, he just gave me something that he didn't think was valuable, but it's, it's going to change my business. And that happens so many times in our mastermind group. It's unbelievable. Like someone today just posted a gold bomb alert or something right, like that, right? And I was like, wow, cool. This is so awesome. That, and we freely give those. That's the coolest part about this thing is that we're giving these things away because we want to help other people because we know that someone else is going to drop something along the way for us too. So it's really cool how it's just really that pay it forward it's really comes back to you, right? The more you give, it comes back. And that's what these gold bombs are. If you're talking about Brent's post today, that was a gold bomb. I'm excited yeah. about that. <laughs> so, and he hasn't even executed on that. He's like, hey, here's an idea. An and everybody's idea. like, oh, yeah. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, you know? And, and that, that's going to pay off for sure. Uh, so that takes me to the last, like, let's wrap it up with mindset. Yep. Let's go. A lot, of the, um, a lot of the conversation towards the end was like them bringing their contractor and them coming to see it, like Brandon used the term, like seeing is believing. And he wanted to change, he wanted to see it, he wanted to understand it, he wanted to 
see what the process was and understand that it's possible. So um, that mindset piece for, for them themselves, like we saw it in episode one with you, with Jeffrey, with Letitia saying like, you can't, we can't, okay, we can, let's try it. And then we did. And then now seeing it with some of our members and bring, saying they're going to want to bring their contractors so that their contractors can, like right now they can tell them all they want that it's possible. But when they see it, they'll, and they understand it. And sometimes hearing it from somebody else is changes the way that they think. And that mindset for all of us, I think is so important. What do you think about that? Oh man, absolutely. And same with me, like I, I going into these groups and seeing some of these other people, they just give you that permission to be successful where you're holding yourself back. I, I remember Bill, you telling a story that Andy or, or someone gave you permission to be successful, right? They kind of remove that ceiling. And for a lot of people, flipping houses should take six months. And for us, I was like, hey, I want to blow up that ceiling. And that's not true, right? Like we've talked about a lot, the four minute mile, that was seemed impossible to do. And it was just this mindset shift that people, once someone saw it, tons, hundreds of people have broken the four minute mile since then. But it was just that one thing that took, someone had to be brave enough and say, you know what, I'm going to blow up this ceiling and I'm going to, I'm going to make something really powerful. And that's what we, we did. And we kind of showed that to people seeing that as believing, yeah, you could totally run a mile in less than four minutes and here's how to do it. And they just kind of took that and they're like, whoa, this is amazing. This is the coolest thing we've ever seen. So I felt like that's kind of what we did with, with Brandon and with Dana. They were able to bring their project managers. They were able to hands-on be with my project manager and just really see what we were able to create. And then they're like, oh, this is easy. Tyler really isn't doing anything secret. He's just really good at being efficient and, and following through these processes. If we take the same processes and put them into our business, why couldn't we do the same thing? And that's really what it kind of evolved to. Yeah, and, and, and you're right. I think a lot of times we come into mastermind groups like this or places like this or an event that you go to and you're like, I need the, the tactic. I need the strategy. I need that thing. And, and they're there, like absolutely there. Mm -hmm. But what we really come out of it is, is changing the way that we think and we're removing the limiting beliefs, changing the way that what we think is possible, removing the glass ceiling, the barriers, all those things like you talked about, what's possible. And giving everyone permission, like that permission goes so far, like it really does. It, and it unlocks the potential that is inside of all of us and a lot of times we're the ones that are limiting our potential with the, what's in our mind and the way that we think. So I think it's really important to, to get around those folks that, that really do kind of push you to grow, to be better, to figure out how, where's your limit and how to, how to kind of keep moving that limit. Like take the governor off, move the limit up, limiter up or remove the glass ceiling above your head, those kind of things. So mindset right. is so important. Um, in, in, the, in the episode, I put together something that I shared that... Uh, uh, about mindset, I basically created a video going back. If I could go back five years, what would I tell myself as I was getting started in this business? And like, how could I shortcut the learning curve for other people to start with that mindset piece? And it's a short video. You can go to sevenfigureflipping.com slash mindset and get it. It's totally free, 100% free. It's just something that I created for our group that I kind of said, okay, hey, it goes along with this episode, so let's put it out for anybody that wants it. So you can go to sevenfigureflipping.com slash mindset. And hopefully it, like my goal in that quick video, it's probably like, I don't know, 25 minutes long or something, is to take everything that I've learned from all of my mentors and all the people that, that, that I've been able to pass this information on to and say, how can I like package all of this and just very quickly, hopefully give it to somebody so they have this, this frame of mind going into this business to, uh, to take over, to, to grow faster than the rest of us or anything that you do, frankly, it's not even just in business, it's in life too. And how can we, you know, just how do we, how do we think and process things and hopefully give you that permission that you need to grow and do more and, and decide that you can actually, you are limiting your own potential and you have to start loosening up the, the limits that you put on yourself, changing your belief. Every single day in our business life, our community, our spiritual life, um, our friends, our family, all that stuff. So, absolutely, I, I totally. All right, agree. man. Uh, you got a, a one minute. What's coming up next? Yeah. Episode three. Yeah, I got a minute. Give us a give us a little do teaser. You know? I, I do. Just just get me hyped up. What's coming? Episode three. Okay, so episode three. Um, I would say probably tonight. 
I will post in this group, Facebook page, I'll post it all over, is I'll put up the, um, after I get my, it's my son's birthday today, I'm getting ready to go to dinner with him, we're going to party, he's going to wear the sombrero, we're going to sing, awesome. and so tonight, after I put him to bed, I'll put it up on uh, YouTube, I'll share it with everybody, but we'll put the, the hype reel, it's, it's really exciting, we are, people are like, when are you going to get to the, like, when are you swinging the hammer and stuff like that, so <laughs> it's demo day! Yes, that's all so I needed to hear, that's my favorite We're going day. to do some really cool stuff, we're getting in the house, we're ripping stuff out, we're we're kind of seeing where it goes and you're going to see some really cool stuff. Episode three, I think is one of my favorite episodes for, so far. Awesome. Absolutely amazing. I'm really excited about it. They're going to be, oh man, there's some, there's some curveballs. There's some twists. There's some things that happen. There's uh, our members are flying out there. There's the coronavirus. There's meth. There's all kinds of stuff. There's problems, issues, good things, bad things uh fun parties i think there's like some sort of smoker or something there's a trampoline there is lots of stuff it's a lot of fun so the first uh, there's donuts like my oh i love donuts yes. and so uh Dang. it's a it's a That's fun awesome. episode i'll put the um i'll put the trailer up uh tonight and i've also got a really cool like behind the scenes video that we've shot that um the videographer like as we're creating it and things like that it's short, kind of fun. And the next step that is I'm, I'm forcing them to give me a blooper reel. So that's going to be next. Oh, we'll launch that. A lot of those. <laughs> me trying to talk, stumbling over myself, uh, right. yelling, getting angry, uh, throwing my computer across the room, stuff like that. <laughs> so um, awesome. all the things that nobody sees behind the scenes. So right. I can't cool. wait. Monday that gets night, me super fun. excited. I can't wait either. Now I'm, I'm ready. Yeah, you should be. Episode that's three is awesome. Needed. Make sure your kids are there because they got a cameo in this one. Love for it. sure. And they it's, they're, like, uh, they're like the, the co-star in this one. Cool. So we've got um, Monday night, Monday night, eight o'clock yep. central time. We'll launch episode three. Um, go back if you haven't already, watch episode one, watch episode two. You can watch the Q&As that Tyler and I do. Um, all of this stuff is meant to be helpful and inspirational for you to uh, remove the glass ceiling, remove the barriers, change your mindset, know that it's possible so you can go out and do the same thing even just by watching this series. So watching this, knowing it's possible, you can go do it too. And uh, I told Tyler before we started this that we were going to keep this one to 30 minutes. It's been like 53 <laughs> minutes, so we just can't do it. So I know, uh, hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Give us some feedback, uh, like smash the like button, subscribe on YouTube. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, do it. We're going to put out some really cool stuff this series here on Facebook. If you're not a part of our, uh, of our group, the Seven Figure House Flipping and Wholesaling Group, make sure you join. I got a podcast called the Seven Figure Flipping Podcast. Make sure you watch that. Lots of places to like like us, follow us, do all that stuff and whatever channel that you want to be on. But primarily like this, this thing is our YouTube thing. Like this video, this series, this documentary um, is obviously highlighting Tyler, his team flipping four houses in seven days, really exciting stuff. So hopefully you're following along. Give us some feedback. Tell me what you think, comment, like it, share it, help us get it out to more people. And um, it's exciting. I want to change. I want to see how many people can flip houses in seven days. You don't have to do four. You can just do one. Yeah. <laughs> just do one in seven days. Like totally. underachieve. It's fine. Just one, right. not four. So, um, awesome. Tyler, you got any last uh, save rounds? Anything no. else? Thank you very much. Hopefully, you guys got some value out of it. And looking forward to Monday night. It's going to be awesome. And then join us again next week. Ask us your questions. We're here to help you. Like, use, take advantage of this. Like, we want to answer your questions. And uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, thanks for hanging out with us on Facebook, on YouTube, and we'll see you guys next time. Make sure that you subscribe on YouTube, you like this video, you share it, you send it out to the world, and, uh, and get it in front of as many people as possible. And hopefully we added some value to you. Comment, let us know what you think. If you want, got some questions, tell us what they are. And we will see you guys on the next episode. Bye. Thanks, guys.